Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, we are going to walk through uh, and answer a question that Brandon had, which was simply, how can we show different content on an OTO page based upon whether somebody bought the bump on the original order page or not? So let me just show you how this works real quick, and then we'll walk through how you set it up as far as the products go, the page goes, and then, of course, the code that you will need in order to make this work work. So right now we have the um, the order bump here turned off. So we're not going to take the order bump. And so that should then bring us on the next page on the OTO page to our OTO number two. That's where we want to send them if they have not purchased the bump order here. At least I believe that's the way I have it set up. So let us go here. In fact, I need to put in my credit card first. And we'll put in all the info right there and then we will complete our order and it'll take a couple of seconds here and then it'll get us over to our OTO page. And so here we are on the OTO page signified in blue. Now I'm saying OTO page. It is the OTO page but then also there's a section here that we say only show us this section if they have not taken it. If they're going to go to OTO number two, only show us this singular section right here. And the reason why we can get away with this is because with the OTOs, the OTOs are dependent upon the button, not on an order form. So like on an order form page, you can't have two order forms, but on an OTO page, you can have as many buttons as you want. And so in this case here, let's just say we're going to grab a hold of the of the button here, or click the button here, grab a hold of this OTO. You also see down here below it is another button that I designed to look more like a no, no text down here, and then here's a no link. So we have a no button and a no link down here, and I'll show you how I set those up in a minute as well. But we will click this button, we will take OTO number two, and it should then bring us to the confirmation page. So here we got our main product and we have our OTO product right there as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to back up here a couple and we're going to reload the page again and then put in the bits that are not showing anymore. And then in this case here, now this time around, we're going to say, yes, we do want to take the order bump. And so now we will complete our order once again. We're going to go to the next page. It'll show us OTO1, where the section is a yellow background color. So now we have OTO number one. And if we click on the button, we will go to the confirmation page. And it will have added then the bump right down here and also the OTO. And I guess it did the purchase of the main product here again as well. So there we go. We have now purchased all of our available four different products. So what do we got to do to get this set up? So the first thing I'm going to do is pop out of this page right here and we're going to go to each one of our pages and look at them individually in particular to start with the products. So we have our order form right here and that was built on an order form page type. We have an OTO which is built on an OTO page type and then we have a confirmation which is built on an order confirmation page type. So make sure you do those pages like that on those specific page types because if not, you're not going to have the elements that you need in order to make everything work. So then on our order form, we're going to go up here to our products. And I only put in two products, the main product and the order bump, as you had already seen. And just quickly to set these up here, I didn't go through the variations and the follow-up funnels and the fulfillment emails and all that garbage. I just said we want this to be Stripe, a one-time payment, and then for the product details, I just called it main product, 997 bucks for this one. And then if we go back out of here for the order bump then... The only difference is we just put in, again, we wanted Stripe. You've got our product details here, $97. And then down here at the bottom, you just have to make sure you say that this is the order bump right there. And so we can cancel out of here. And then we'll go to the second step in the funnel. And here we set up our two OTOs. And you don't, you don't necessarily signify that they're OTOs. I just name them as OTO number one and OTO number two. This one here I made $97. That's all you have to do here. And then on the second one, 
oops, I didn't want to do that, go to products. On the second one here, I made that $297 for OTO number two and set it up exactly the same way. So now what we want to do is, and the confirmation page, I just used a standard template that they had and it just populated everything because there was nothing really I needed to set up on the confirmation page. So on the order form page, let's go in here first and we will edit the page. And all I did is I used the individual elements in here. So I have an input form here for the full name and I even said it's not required. I have an input field here for the email address. And on both of these two here, I said submit on enter. I turned that off. You don't want them to hit enter and then suddenly try to be submitting the page. And then here is just the shipping element, shipping address element right here. Nothing special set up in there. And in between here, I just have some uh, text elements that are just a little bit larger font size. Uh, to make it look a little bit better. The credit card blank, I just had it be the one field and 16 pixels on there. Dropped in a little credit card image here. I was actually kind of um, mirroring the one that Brandon ended up building. And I figured I'd make it look the same because it was good looking form. And then over here on the right hand side, we have the select product 2.0 right over here on the right hand side along with an image and on his he had a bunch of other stuff below here testimonials proof uh, proof badges that kind of stuff down below here and then here we got our order bump of course didn't modify this at all i'm going to shoot another video on on all kinds of different ways you can modify the order bump with uh text or I mean, css i should say and then down here at the bottom we have our complete our order and in this case here, we um, set this to submit, so it will um, so it will submit the page. And then I also gave it a data title of submit button right there. And the same thing with the bump. I also gave that a data title of order bump, so we can more easily find it in the code. And so instead of using your standard, uh, what would be your uh, CSS ID selector down here. Um, I didn't want to use that. I want to use a data title on this. I think it keeps things a little bit cleaner. So that's it as far as setting up this page. Now let's just take a look at the tracking code and it's quite simple. So as you know, we just named that one button down at the bottom. We gave that a data title of submit button. So let me move this over to the right. So we say when somebody clicks on the submit button down here, what like we said, it's going to submit to the page, it's going to save all the information to the contact database, it's going to charge the credit card, it's going to do all that stuff. But then also what we wanted to do is we're going to say here is if order bump, so we got our order bump right here, and if the input type checkbox is checked, so let's just take a look at that in the code. Let's come over here, let's uh, right click, let's inspect this element. And so we come down here, so up here somewhere, so here we got our data title of order bump right there. And so then a child element of that, we'll go down here until we find what is our input element down here. There should only be one input element as the child of our order bump because you can see here there's only one checkbox on the page so we could get away with just using the input tag right there and then in order just to be more specific i didn't really need this in there but a lot of times now what i'm doing more is i'm putting in not only the elements label or um, yeah um, label in this case here of input or the tag, I should say, it's not a label, it's a tag of input. I'm also putting then also the um, attribute in there of the type. So we got input type of checkbox. So if we come back over here, that's what we see here, input type of checkbox. And there's no space in between there because it's all, again, in the same element so when the uh, selectors are on the same element you butt them together whereas if they are on different elements you separate them by a space or sometimes by other characters and then we're just saying here is checked so is is a is a jquery method that just says basically what it says there in plain english is this checked 
and it does, it checks it, it's either true or false, that is checked. And if it is checked, then we go to our first condition here and we say we're going to go out to local storage, we're going to set in local storage the bump Bump taken is what I'm calling this element in the local storage. We're going to call it bump taken is true. And if we come over here to the local storage, we come down here to application and we find the page we're working on. And right here, our key is bump taken and our value is currently false. If I click on this again and we change this, you'll see now it changed to true and it'll probably kick me to the next page as well. Well, actually it actually didn't, so um, I guess I didn't have something filled in there all the way, which is fine. So then, um, so that is the true and then of course if it's false, we're gonna put in there bump taken of false. So that's it, pretty simple code right here to be able to grab that value. Is it true, is it false? Did they take the bump, did they not? We're gonna store it into local storage so that when we get to the next page, then we're going to be able to see that and use that bit of information. So we're gonna back out of here, I didn't change anything, so we will just leave the page. Now we'll go into our OTO. And we already went through the product, so let's just go into edit our page. And you're gonna see nothing at first because both of these sections are hidden. And you see here I gave them a data title of OTO1 dash section, OTO2 dash section. And we got the obviously different background colors. Obviously you're going to design this however you would like. Uh, but like I said, the most important thing is to set to that data title because that's how we are going to say which one we want to see on the page. And then in here, I just put in a couple of things, including these buttons. So let's take a look at how we set up the buttons. You just uh, make a button, you set the action, and then you come up here and you say, okay, do I want this first button to be OTO1 or OTO2? You pick that right there. Same thing down here in our second bit. We got OTO1 or OTO2. This is where I said earlier that the, um, the OTOs are based upon the buttons, not an order form, anything like that. So you can have as many of these buttons as you would like on the page, which again, you'd have to set up more conditionals on the first page in order to then have that flow through to the second page. And then again, you always want a no link as well. So we here we put in a second button and in this case here I said no link don't buy the upsell so that's how you do it with a button now down here I did the same thing with a button but what I did is I came in first I came up here to themes I said I wanted a flat button and then down here at the bottom I made the background transparent and I changed the text color so that it gives you a transparent button and it does get a little bit of a lighter background as you hover over it and then again in here, I just went to set action and I said, let's do a no link. Now, if you want to do this as just a link itself, we can do that as well. So you just put in your text, you uh, highlight all the text, and then it will give you your box here. Well, you have to click on the little here. Let me just break this here then we can redo this. So we come here, we click on this. So you highlight the whole thing. Then we click on the little chain and we say hashtag no dash link. And then that will do exactly the same thing as, as the button, as the no link button would do as well. It will just then send you to the next page because it says, no, we don't want that. Now, if you got a bunch of series of, of um, OTOs and down sells, if you say no, what it'll do is it will send you to the next down sell, which should be the next funnel step. If you click on an OTO, it will send you to the next OTO. So let's say you got OTO, down sell, OTO. You click on the OTO, it'll bring you down to the next OTO. If you're up here at the first OTO and you say no, it'll bring you to the next down sell. If on that down sell you say no, then it'll bring you down to whatever's below here, which would probably be your confirmation page at that point. So that's it. We just have to set up these buttons in here. And then we come in and we hide both of these sections. And then the very last thing again here is a little bit of tracking code. Again, it's quite simple. So the first thing when we land on the page, we want to reach out to local storage and we want to get the item that has the key of bump taken. And we're going to assign that to my variable here of bump taken. Then we just simply say if bump taken equals true, 
than the OTO section one. We want to show that on the page. Otherwise, if bump taken is not equal to true, meaning it would be equal to false in our case, because we only had two states, true or false, then we want to show OTO section number two right there. And so we use the data title and just use the jQuery method of show. You could do uh, an attribute with a style of display none or display block, or you could also do CSS with display block as well. So that is it for this. A couple little snippets of code and getting the pages set up. And it was more, more really of an understanding of the fact that the buttons are what control the OTOs, not an order form or anything else. So that's it for this video. If you got any questions, just let me know.